Hi, my name is Dave Landsman. I'm the Director of Industry Standards at Western Digital. I'm also an advisory member of the SNEA Technical Council. I'm going to give you a brief overview of the zone storage track that's going to be coming up at the, the STC conference next week. So before I talk about the track itself, I want to give a little bit of a contrast between traditional and zone storage, which is the reason we're having this track. So traditional storage, and I probably shouldn't call it traditional because it's still quite new, but uh, I'll still call it that. So in a traditional storage system, the host does random or sequential writes anywhere in the LBA space of the device. And then the device manages all the data placement. So if the host writes sequentially, you'll see sequential IO, like the, these purple regions here, which have been you know, ostensibly written sequentially, or this kind of pink ones here. If the host writes randomly, you'll get small spaces and you'll get blank spaces in the LBA space. So there's a fragmentation process that goes on in the traditional storage model. And this is just inevitably, it's an inevitable outcome of the needs of the applications. But that, and what, what it causes is that hard drives have to be defragmented or SSDs have to do garbage collection and their performance suffers a little bit or they have pauses, things like that. Now, in a zone storage environment, what we're doing is we're taking advantage of the fact that in the cloud, and, and in certain enterprise use cases, very significant ones, um, the, the, the host can deal with using sequential rights only. And so what zone storage defines is that sequential rights are required to the device and they are done, they are written to predefined logical zones on the device. So you can see these zones here with the dotted arrows around them. And the host and device co-manage data placement. So it's not left just to the device. There's actually a contract between uh, the host and device on the placement of data within zones and also the rearrangement of zones when necessary. So there's a lot of nuance and detail about what this means. Uh, and we'll hear about that in the track. But this fundamental distinction between traditional and zone storage is is what we're talking about here, and it's the important thing. And it's that there's sequential, the model is sequential write only, and that the host and device co-manage data placement. Now, the benefits that accrue from zone storage are a number, there's a number of them. So first, first of all, we, get, we end up with devices that are higher performance, better capacity, uh, better capacity utilization, and have lower cost. So when I say higher performance, it applies back basically to SSDs and HDDs uh, in that we'll get better overall performance because of the sequential I.O. and we'll also get better, uh, a more reliable latency. So it, it affects both. For better capacity utilization, a, good, a, a very good example is SSDs. A traditional SSD is shown in the picture, gets fragmented. And so it needs over provisioning space uh, for garbage collection. So we're basically taking away user data, allocating it as kind of a, a, a scratch pad. It's kind of like cheating at Tetris, right? So we have a, this over provisioning area and it takes some percentage of the drive. In a zone storage environment, um, the device doesn't get nearly as fragmented. I mean, zones can get somewhat fragmented, but there are far fewer zones. And that because the zones are uh, sequentially written and because they're host managed, we just don't get as much fragmentation. So we can give this NAND capacity that we use for over provisioning back to the customer. On lower cost, um, now again, I'll use SSD as an example. Um, we can have less DRAM in the device. And the reason for that is that a traditional SSD uh, we map every logical, every LBA, every logical block to every physical block on the device. Um, and there's a lot of logical blocks, especially as you get into very high capacity SSDs. With zone storage, we're just mapping the first LBA of each zone um, to, to in this table. So, and there are far fewer zones, uh, and zones are typically quite big. There are far fewer zones than there are LBAs. So it's a very simple effect that the logical to physical mapping tables get smaller. 
and we, so we saved money on DRAM. And again, as we're starting to talk about um, four level cell NAND, things like that, and one, two, four tera terabyte SSDs, this DRAM cost is becoming a factor for data center customers. So here is the track, uh, the zone storage track. I have kind of, uh, if you look in the program, it's just a list of uh, talks, but I've kind of divided it up into three buckets, or maybe I've divided it into three zones. Um, the first, the first segment of the talks is really about ZNS architecture. So ZNS is the new kid on the block. We just uh, NVMe just announced uh, ZNS in June of 2020, and um, so this is going to discuss the architecture of ZNS and some. Um, a little bit about the uh, ins and outs of doing out of order writes to, um, to zone namespaces. The second part of the track is about optimizing the storage stack and applications for zone storage. So um, the first talk talks about the benefits of end to end data placement in general. Then we have a few talks about optimizing file systems and tools. Uh, and then we get into a couple of talks on SMR HDDs because um, although we've had zoned hard drives for a while, uh, we're still improving them and improving the software infrastructure around them. So we'll have that. And then lastly, we have tools for zoned, uh, we have a section on tools for zone storage, uh, PMU and libraries and some other things. So that's kind of the outline of the talk. You can, um, you know, of course, if you're watching them after the fact, you can go through them in any order. Um, but this gives you a little bit of a, a parsing of the uh, uh, topics within the talks. So um, enjoy the track and please explore uh, the rest of the show. So while you're watching the tracks, uh, please make sure if you're watching them live, especially please use the chat windows. Um, we really encourage you to rate each session that you watch. There's a box under the video. Uh, that you can use to do that. This will really help us improve um, this, this virtual uh, COVID inspired um, environment is challenging for all of us. So we really want to um, figure out how to do virtual events better and better. And then please check out the other um, uh, activities at the event. There's birds with feather sessions and other things. And uh, please do get involved uh, with zone storage through whichever way makes, uh, you know, is relevant for you. Standards, Linux enabling, application enabling, or tools. Um, overall, um, we want you to get involved and, um, and really, as I like to say, uh, help us in the process of making the world safe for sequential I.O. Thanks. <laughs>